Heartland Highways is made possible in part by Sarah Bush Lincoln Health System, dedicated to providing care for all and creating healthy communities in East Central Illinois, offering general and specialty medicine, including a regional cancer center, heart and lung center, orthopedics and sports medicine, a center for interventional pain, and a full complement of diagnostic and rehabilitative services. Sarah Bush Lincoln, trusted, compassionate care. Just ahead on this week's show, we're all about food and cooking. First, we're off to a small town restaurant in Hazeldell, Illinois, where people from all over come for home cooking and delicious desserts. Then, we're heading to a cooking school at the Kitchen Conservatory in St. Louis. Finally, we'll make a stop in Terre Haute to see how porcelain on steel cookware is manufactured. That's coming up next, so don't go away. Welcome back to Heartland Highways. We're here today at Stevenson Tower Dining at EIU because today's show is all about food and cooking. That's right. We're headed down to Hazel Dell, Illinois, where people are coming from all over to get a taste of home cooking thanks to restaurant owner Kathy Smith. Tucked away in the southeast corner of Cumberland County sits the community of Hazel Dell, population around 100. Like a lot of small towns that once bustled with stores and restaurants, today sit empty buildings. But in Hazel Dell, there's one exception. Since 2002, business has been booming at the Hazel Dell restaurant. Well, this, is, this is home. I've always, always lived here. I always wanted to do something. Mom and Dad had the old store building next door and they ran, my grandma ran the post office and mom and dad ran the store, so we was always, this was, this was it, right? here in Hazeldale, and I always loved it here, and I thought, well, we, we needed something here for the local people, so we opened this up, and, and people will drive. I, I didn't know, my husband was very skeptical that they wouldn't, but people will drive to, to get food and, and bake things. I was kind of surprised. <laughs> well, this will brought a lot of uh, people here from, from all over. They come here from, Oh, I don't know, for our Springfield or Decatur, just to get pie once in a while. <laughs> kind of a long trip for a pie, but uh, it's good. After spending 13 years as a school cafeteria cook, Kathy decided to open her own business. The original plan was to be a bakery only, but soon after, lunches were added, with each day offering a different special beginning with something that some might remember from their school lunch days. Wednesday we call it Cook's Choice. I have usually whatever meats on sale, that's, I do pork chops, bonus pork chops or roast beef, or we, yesterday we had baked ham, macaroni and cheese, and then on Thursday we do noodles. I always either have chicken and noodles or beef and noodles, mashed potatoes and homemade hot rolls, and that's Wednesday and Thursday. And then on Friday I make like a pork barbecue, pulled pork barbecue sandwiches, and we make the Oh, the traditional sides like the oh, baked beans, potato salad, slaw, things like that. And then we have open at 6 o'clock earlier on Saturday and we have biscuits and gravy. And that's kind of about my big breakfast day. I've kind of got away from breakfast because I don't open as early as I used to. Kathy's signature bakery items include her cinnamon rolls and coconut cream pie. We make coconut pie every day. That's our, I was kind of surprised because I thought the fruit pies would go real well. but. We have coconut pie every day, and then we do um, use some kind of fruit, and then maybe another soft pie. We have chocolate or butterscotch, banana, lemon. We do, you know, pies like that, and then I make cinnamon rolls every day. They go over real well. We sell several of those every day. And those pies and cinnamon rolls go fast. So if you want to get your hands on one, it's recommended you get here early or call ahead and reserve one. Kathy also does special orders and catering as well. With seating for about 12 to 15, the restaurant becomes a flurry of activity from 11 until noon. On this day, Kathy is assisted by Janice Decker. 
And you know, Janice has been baking for a lot of years and she does a good, good job. I appreciate her. Together, the two women prepare, plate, and serve, all within a space no wider than 12 feet and barely enough room for a video camera. That's okay. Pretend that you need to get back here. That was just right here. Customers enter the front door of the restaurant and find themselves basically in Kathy's kitchen. Well, we just come in and we also have the list of what we're having that day up on the side of the ice machine and everybody just kind of comes in and looks and tells me what they want and go sit down and wait. Or, and they're, you know, we kind of have the regulars every day that come in, you know, and get their lunches to take out or eat here. We've got several that's here every day and we have a good crowd and a lot of nice people. <laughs> well, my uh, wife has Alzheimer's and I'm not too good a cook. I'm a learning. <laughs> But anyway, uh, that's the reason I come for lunch, and, and then she makes me, she makes a good potato soup, and, and I get it on Saturdays, and we eat it on, through the week, as the evening meal. Yeah, there was a little boy came, he wanted to come and down someplace for his birthday, and his dad said I, he wanted to come and eat someplace. He said, it's where we ate in the kitchen, and he couldn't remember where it would have been, and then he said something one day about going to Hazel Dell. Yes, that's it, he said. But he was just, he always remembered because he wanted to sit in, the, in there in that table because he could watch us, watch us cook and stuff, and that was his big thing, he wanted to come to Hazel Dell. A loyal customer following draws both locals and people from around the region. Advertising has come mostly by word of mouth. When Kathy needed to close in 2007 to help her son who'd been injured in an accident, People were supportive and ready to come back when she reopened the next year. I, I like it. I enjoy it. The Paul Holson that you talk to, a lot of days he'll say, I sure had a good lunch yesterday. We appreciate you being down here. <laughs> Makes it worthwhile. That's a good deal. The Hazel Dell Restaurant, whose motto is down home cooking at its best, is open Wednesday through Friday from 8 until 2 and Saturdays from 6.30 until 2. If you'd like to purchase a copy of any Heartland Highways program, visit our online store at weiu.net. DVDs are available for $25 each. Visa, MasterCard, Discover, or American Express are accepted. If you prefer, you can call in your order at 1-877-727-9348. Just let us know what show you're interested in by mentioning the story name or person featured in the show. Please allow four to six weeks for delivery. Our next adventure takes us to St. Louis. We had the chance to tag along on a bus tour sponsored by our local hospital's tour program, Advantage 50. One of our stops in St. Louis was at the Kitchen Conservatory, a retail store and cooking school. A menu of butternut squash soup, beef tenderloin with gorgonzola sauce, potato celery root puree, green bean bundles, and to top it off, an orange chocolate mousse. This is a demonstration class at the Kitchen Conservatory, where participants watch their meal being prepared, learn about cooking techniques. And I want this just to kind of get the garlic started to cook. I don't want it to be too brown. So you kind of have to and most importantly, eat. Started in Belleville, Illinois, the cooking school and kitchen store has been at this location on Clayton Road since 1991. Current owner Ann Corey expanded the original building that now includes a hands-on kitchen, demonstration kitchen, and retail space. Today, chefs and culinary educators teach over 700 classes a year. Welcome to Kitchen Conservatory. My name is Barb. I'm going to be your chef today. And I am assisted today by Barbie and Rebecca. Um, and they are very important to me because they're going to clean up after me, which is always a plus when you're um, cooking. Um, unfortunately, they don't come home with me, so I do have to clean up my own mess at home, I know. Barb, who is the cooking school director, picked out some of her favorite recipes, starting with a butternut squash soup. What I love about it is um, the bacon that's in it, uh, the Granny Smith apples, and it's got a little touch of apple cider vinegar in it, too. Uh, I always try to look for the squash that have, this is not a good example, that have the longer neck because that's the solid part that you can just basically cut it up and chop it. 
Um, the bottom here will have some seeds in the center. Throughout the demonstration, participants are educated on various cooking techniques and tips. And also, you can probably notice that there, you've, I've got some nice brown stuck on the bottom of the pan. And that is very flavorful stuff. And when I start to put in my liquid, that will all loosen up and um, be incorporated into the sauce. So whenever you are browning, um, if you use a, a nonstick pan, you won't get the sticking and you won't get that extra flavor. Cast iron holds the heat really nicely and the, the covering makes it easier to clean, but it will brown foods very nicely. With the soup underway, Barb moves on to the next recipe, a potato puree that includes celery root. It's got a little bit of a celery taste. It's like it's kind of like um, you know, it's a tuber with sort of a like a potato would be. Um, I think it's a mild. You'll have a little hint of the um, celery in it, and but it you know it's it's a dirty little thing and kind of ugly, but you know it tastes good because it's it's so oddly shaped a peeler doesn't work very well. I just take my knife and once I again have a nice flat surface, I'm just going to go and I'm just going to cut around and just cut off this outside edge. And then I can always go back and trim it to all these irregular shapes. The cooking demonstration is interactive and people are encouraged to ask their chefs about all things cooking related. Chicken stock, um, you start with some aromatics which are carrots, onions and celery and you're going to put that in the pot and usually using like, um, you know, like backs of the chicken or carcass um, and you want to cover it with water and you want to bring that to a boil and let it simmer, I would say at least five or six hours is ideal. Uh, then you strain it, and um, at that point, I usually like to put mine in a, in a big bowl and put it in the refrigerator, and the next morning, then all that fat has come up to the top, and it's congealed, and I just kind of spoon that off. And then I usually, if, if I make it, I try to make a lot, and I'll, I'll put it into Ziploc bags and stick it in my freezer. As the soup and potato dishes are cooking, it's on to the main course of beef tenderloin. We're going to um, season it nicely with salt and pepper. And I'm going to then heat up my pans until they're really hot. I'm going to pour in a little bit of oil. And then I'm going to just do a quick sear on all sides of the beef. Get a nice crust on that. And then at that point, I'm going to take the entire pan and I'm going to put it in the oven. And we're going to roast that. Um, and I'll, today I'll probably roast it till it's about uh, about 130 degrees or so. When we bring it out of the oven, you always want to let it rest. What that does is all those juices can soak back into your meat. A lot of times if you take something right out of the oven and you cut it, you're going to notice all the juice runs out. So whenever I'm doing any type of, of meats, always let it rest before you slice it and that just enables those juices to get back in there. As the pots are boiling and the meat is roasting, it's a good time to browse the retail store. Here, they stock a multitude of kitchen utensils, pots and pans, small appliances, cookbooks, knives, spices, baking supplies, and a whole lot more. Back at the demonstration, colorful green bean bundles wrapped in bacon are being assembled as the soup course is being served. Today's meal is especially good because of two ingredients, heavy cream and butter. Barb explains the difference between European butter and U.S. butter. What makes it different is that the United States standard for butter is 80% fat. The standard in Europe is 82% fat. So it just makes it that little bit better. <laughs> better with butter, always is. Those two ingredients, along with a fine quality chocolate, make up the final dish, orange chocolate mousse. 
and I'm a firm believer in the better the chocolate, the better your dessert's going to be. With the rest of the course is ready, it's finally time to eat. Participants leave with a full stomach, but also the recipes from today's class. For those wanting a more applied cooking experience, the Kitchen Conservatory offers a variety of hands-on classes too. So whether you're an aspiring chef or don't know your teaspoons from your tablespoons, the Kitchen Conservatory offers what you need and what you need to know to become the Iron Chef of your kitchen. We finish our food theme adventures this week with a look at how porcelain on steel cookware or graniteware is made by Colombian home products. Now this Terre Haute business has been through many changes throughout its history, but one thing remains the same, the quality and care that goes into making their products. Colombian home products got its start back in 1870 in Ohio as the Bel Air Stamping Company. At the time, they wanted to get into the new business of enamelware products. A fire at the Ohio plant prompted a move to Harvey, Illinois, to a new plant and a new name. The Chicago World Fair was being prepared and it was called the Columbian Exposition, so the company name became Columbian Enameling and Stamping Company. That factory burned to the ground in 1899 they refinanced, came to Terre Haute, Indiana. On January 2, 1902, Columbian enamel and stamping went into production. The new plant was steam operated and totally independent from city services like water, sewer, and even the fire department. It's kind of interesting uh, to note that the first piece of equipment to be brought online when they moved in was the sprinkler system. They didn't intend to burn out the third time. But it was totally independent. They had a fire brigade, their own security force, and the street that runs in front of this building where we are at this moment was maintained by the Colombian Enameling and Stamping Company until the city took it over later in the uh, 20s, I believe it was. Since the factory was built without electric lighting, it was constructed with large windows that would allow daylight in and excess heat out. And they worked one 12-hour shift and the reason for the foundry style and the high bay windows was to give maximum light. The workers employed at the plant made ceramic on steel products for the consumer and even the medical market. The products were affordable and could be purchased at dime stores and hardware stores across the country. While there were many other U.S. manufacturers at that time, Colombian was best known for their line called Hoosier Gray. A ceramic engineer here back at the turn of the century invented the formula. Unfortunately, when he died, he took the formula to the grave with him. And we never have been able to discover the secret of the process. It's an exceptionally chip resistant uh, enamel. Maybe not the most beautiful, but absolutely the strongest. With 10 acres under one roof, Colombian was the largest manufacturer of ceramic on steel cookware in the world, employing as many as a thousand. They were known as a company who paid their staff well, even staying open during the Depression years. It was not just a place for men to work, but women were most often employed in the dipping department, while the men operated the stamping mill. The company has gone through many changes in name and ownership throughout its history. In 1998, the company returned back to private ownership after being the world headquarters of General Housewares. They even took back their original name of Colombian. Today, they are the last manufacturer of ceramic on steel cookware in the United States. Operating from the same location, Terre Haute, the company continues to make those familiar black and white turkey roasters, stock pots, and canners. The entire manufacturing process takes place right here and begins with two raw materials, glass and steel. The glass frit is milled on site. It's ground and mixed with other ingredients to become the porcelain slurry. The other raw uh, uh, material that we deal with is steel. 
and by raw product it does kind of arrive in a coil form. Uh, from the coil form we send it to a press where we blank or cut circles or squares or uh, whatever shape might be needed that uh, is the first in the operation in line to the completed product. Those blanks then uh, have lubricant applied to them. Uh, then they go to a draw press where they are formed. From the draw press, it'll go through a trimming and possibly a beading operation, and then maybe to a resistance welding operation where a handle or some sort of weldment, as we call them, is attached through resistance welding. From that point, uh, it's basically uh, fabricated and the remaining operations are cleaning, uh, where we go through an alkaline washer. Once the product is cleaned, it heads up to the finishing department where it is wet dipped. Early in our years, this, this was all a hand operation and it has since uh, progressed to these machines uh, that are basically designed and built in-house for this particular end use. The combination of materials within the porcelain slurry keeps the mixture from just running off the steel. It's what also gives the finished product its color, in this case black with white specks. Once the pans come out of the dipping process, they move to the drying furnace and then onto the much hotter firing kiln. And that's where it's baked to a 1500 or possibly 1530 degree temperature at a minimum time controlled uh, uh, slot so as to do it properly and it's all very critical to the operation. The firing process literally bonds the porcelain and steel together, making it extremely durable for many years to come. This cookware is also great for its ability to transfer heat. Each piece is inspected, packaged, and made ready for shipment to a number of major discount retailers in the country. Uh, we have a three-day turnaround time. We have to have it on a truck and have it shipped within three days. And we don't always know what the order is coming in for specifically. So we have to have some in-process inventory readied so that we don't disappoint a customer. And, uh, and that's how we keep our customer base as it is. With increasing overseas competition, companies like Colombian Home Products have become a rarity. But for more than 100 years, they've remained in business here in the United States. Their ability to produce a quality product that keeps up with customer demand is just one of the reasons for their long-term success. Our average length of service is 24 years, which is phenomenal in this day and age. Uh, employees come here and stay. Uh, I have been here 42 years uh, in March. Uh, however, we are very comfortable in the fact that a lot of our employees have been here a lot of years. And I think that's one of the reasons that we are uh, managing to be successful in this day and age with a much older product. Over the years, we have refined processes, we have upgraded processes. Uh, we've been able to increase the speed of the operation to offer the customer uh, the best product at the lowest possible cost when they want it. And you don't mess with success. Where else can we go and do that? Want more information on the story you've just seen? Head to our website at weiu.net slash hh. Check out our online episode gallery for past and present shows. Send us an email or find out how to contact the people and places we feature in the show. That's weiu.net slash hh. We're just about out of time for this week's show, but we want to take a minute to thank all of you who submitted story ideas and told us how much you liked the show. That's right, we love hearing from you. So from Stevenson Dining Hall here on the campus of EIU, we'll see you next time. Heartland Highways is made possible in part by 
Sarah Bush Lincoln Health System, dedicated to providing care for all and creating healthy communities in East Central Illinois, offering general and specialty medicine, including a regional cancer center, heart and lung center, orthopedics and sports medicine, a center for interventional pain, and a full complement of diagnostic and rehabilitative services. Sarah Bush Lincoln, trusted, compassionate care. this week's show, but we want to, what do we want to do? We don't want to do anything. I thought you were going to save it. <laughs> I thought I was going to save it too. I was like, save it, and I couldn't. We don't want Kate in this shot. <laughs> Haute, Il Terre Haute, Illinois. <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's no such place. Go, go, three, two. Now this Terre Haute business has, uh, I, don't, I had it right. This comment, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's a do-over. <laughs>